Good morning to everybody. Uh, as mentioned before, humanity is facing the biggest refugee crisis. Once people leave their homelands, it's a painful journey till they again settle a secure life for themselves and for their families. Turkey is a recipient country, as well as a passage of this great migration. Most of the migrants are aiming to reach European countries. Unfortunately, the route is very difficult, dangerous, on which many lives have been lost. Access to health care is one of the most crucial and vital issues for refugees. Now we have representatives of national medical associations of Sweden, uh, Greece, Belgium and Israel. Uh, I would like to invite the uh, representatives of Belgium, Israel and Greece, please. And uh, they will share their experiences about refugee crisis and access to health care. And uh, we have a main question to all representatives of national medical associations. Please welcome. Uh, our main question is, what should physicians and professional organizations do in terms of refugee crisis, the biggest refugee crisis we are facing in our world? Uh, the first speaker uh, will be uh, Dr. Heidi Stens Miran. Uh, did I yes. tell it correctly? From Sweden, Swedish Medical Association. We have 10 minutes for each uh, representative. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yes. I can hear me, so I guess it's okay. Um, and um, thank you. To the, the Turkish Medical Association who is arranging this meeting. It's a very uh, important topic for the whole world, not at least the European countries. Uh, Sweden is a small nation and uh, we have about 9.8 million inhabitants and uh, in uh, European measures or European Union measures um, we uh, have uh, so 2014 and 2015 taken about 160,000 refugees to our country, which make us taking the most per capita in Europe. Uh, but we also have the ability to uh, welcome uh, refugees and we have a huge responsibility to do so. Uh, we do have uh, or do face some challenges. They are not primarily medical challenges. They're more of the capacity challenges. Uh, we also have the highest rate of, of uh, accepting uh, permanent residency to Sweden, and we are happy to do so. Uh, uh, one of the challenges we face is that about 70% of the uh, refugees uh, spend 14 months waiting uh, in the application process to come through the system which is a huge challenge. It is a challenge of housing and a challenge of, of the capacity of the healthcare system, not medically, as I told you, but a capacity problem. And uh, we have a large number of, of minors coming, approximately 25% approximately are minors, and of the minors, well, which means uh, uh, under the age of 18, and about 85% of these are male, and the rest are female. And um, when the, quite a few of the refugees also have a medical degree, and we work on the process of speeding up the, the time from arrival in, in, in Germany, in Sweden, the, the way to the labor market. As Sir Michael Marmot told us, that's the key to get them onto the labor market, to, to, uh, edu to, um, to see to that they get language education and, and can be a part of the society, the civil society. 
our challenges is, uh, except for the from the uh, processing applications, uh, it's about um, securing shelter, a place to live, and a way into the society. And um, uh, we also have challenges in the civil society, and for us it has uh, made us come up with new ideas. And uh, the civil society has contributed through uh, um, uh, different organizations, but a large number of physicians being part of this uh, civil society and offering services, offering help, especially in uh, the uh, um, access points like the central stations where they are been working, as, uh, putting up volunteer centers. And uh, the challenges uh, is in the municipality system well, for housing, access to schools, and also access to health care. We offer all, um, all, well, everyone under the age of 18 free access to all healthcare and dental systems. And uh, there it is. We also offer free checkups. The challenge is to identify who have more needs and who have less needs. The people who don't have um, an excessive need for healthcare, then it's not a problem. But with um, persons with chronic diseases, just to identify them to connect with the uh, refugees who have uh, chronic diseases, to inform them that, them that they do have the right to health care and to get them into the system. That's the challenge. Once they're in the system, then it's running. That's not a problem. And the same is for, for dental care and so on. So we need to be active, to go out to refugee centers and uh, identify them. And that's the problem, again, with shelter, because we don't have the capacity yet in the refugee centers. At the moment, we can offer housing for all of them, but there has been a prob huge problem during the autumn of 2015, offering enough shelter. And um, uh, the... Uh, um, Municipalities uh, are hiring into hotels, whose empty off-season hotels, for example, uh, at the moment. But we are trying to to make the refugees to come into the societies as well, being part. Um, in the, in Sweden, we are working with connecting with uh, healthcare workers among the refugees. We are offering like language cafes where they can meet other uh, physicians. We are also working on the government to arrange language courses, like medical uh, language courses, so that they will be closer, closer to health care. We are also trying to put up mentorship programs so that doctors who is in a validation process can contact with other physicians in Sweden to come out in, health, in the health care sector, which is very important. And one of the uh, challenges is the long process of uh, being, being validated in, in uh, the system. Our um, uh, National Board of Health and Welfare are trying to speed up the process and trying to change the process as well. Because in Sweden we normally say we have a system for everything. I'm quite proud of that. But <laughs> when the system is being tested in its capacity then it's quite obvious that the system is not working optimal. It will take a lot of time. It will take up to a year to get the papers evaluated. Then you can start the process of, of uh, coming into the system. And uh, then they have got another one and a half year at least to the labor market. So it can take up to seven years to get through the system and come out on the labor market as a doctor, which is a huge challenge. So. And I think I will um, uh, stop there because I will, then we are in time, I guess. Yeah, we have still time, uh, three, four minutes, if you wish to continue. Yeah, uh, I'll just say one more thing. Yes, what please. we are working on as, as a physici physicians is not the medical issue, it's about, but it is a medical issue as well, as Sir Michael Marmot said, when they can't get access to the civil society, because it, they, they, and that's why we are trying to put up uh, internships who is uh, uh, more equivalent or, or more made for including people to the healthcare sector. And uh, we have to 
make changes in, in our way of, of uh, processing and, uh, and evaluate the uh, uh, healthcare workers, if they are doctors, nurses, midwives, no matter what. And we also collaborate between uh, the, uh, uh, between the uh, well, it's a collaboration between nurses' organization, doctors' organizations. And these challenges may make us um, collaborate in a new way, which is very healthy for us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Heidi, uh, for this informative and brief uh, information about the situation in Sweden. Now we have uh, Greek Medical Association's president, Dr. Michael Lastarakos. Uh, I will give my place to the uh, translator. Thank you, Mrs. Okay. Okay. Sir Person. Okay. Uh, sir, Mike, Sir, Mike. Uh, Marmot, President of the World Medical Association, Dr. Bayezid Ayla Ilhan, President of the Turkish Medical Association, Dr. Zuk Rez, President of the Istanbul Medical Chamber, President and Delegates of the National Medical Association and Chambers, dear colleagues, dear guests, the refugee and migrant flow that our country receives it is at an unprecedented European and international level since the Second World War. Greece was called to provide a safe haven for these people away from the horrors of war and persecution. These people were welcomed by my country amid a deep economic crisis with great solidarity and dignity. Specifically, from 1st of January 2015 until 15 of February 2016, 933,000 of and 562 refugees and immigrants have passed through Greece. Most of them were refugees from Syria, Afghanistan, and Iraq. Specifically, nearly 4-3% come from Syria and 27% from Afghanistan and Iraq but we also had losses, many victims. My country receives 95% of refugees and migrants bound of Europe. 70% of these desperate people are refugees. 34% children and 21 women. The social profile of their population is in majority consisting of families, infants, young children, pregnant women, and elderly. Once they arrive in Greece, we register them. There were difficulties present in this process, as we had originally requested 100 fingerprint recording machines, Eurodac, and obtained only for six, which in turn are able to record 10,000, uh, 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 4,600 people on a day, 100 people each. When migrant flow exceeded 10,000 people daily, it was practically impossible to list them all. After a series, a successive request we were providing with another 52, so we were able to record up to 98% of the people. Regarding hotspots which our country has committed to create the situation, as we speak in these centers, is as follows. In Ireland, Lesbos, for 
2,500 people in Island Laros for 1,000 people is ready in Island Hios. 1,100 people capacity center is ready in Island Samos and the Leiden Coast uh, will be launched uh, within the next few days. People arrive from this island to the mainland and they then continue on to their destination. Greece is therefore not the destination country for these people, but a transient country. And somewhere here is where the blame game begins towards Greece at line us. Greece cannot protect its borders, which are all Europe's borders. Allow me to note that Frontex has verified the excellent standard in Greece work. Nobody can act differently. Nobody can but rescue refugees. The country's moral advantage has been struck by the way it treats the refugee issue. The Greek stance has led to three Nobel Peace Prize nominations. The moral advantage of my country has on merit because we do not create camps for 400,000 people. We do not push people back to the sea. We do not paint the refugee and immigrant house door rent and will not remove assets of over 900 euros from these people. And this is what has put Greece in the spotlight. As doctors are really released and practical, we evaluate data and then act. There is a vol voluntary refugee resettlement program in other European countries with initial concerns uh, the 16,000 refugees. Further, there is a re readmission agreement with Turkey. The threat is that for the last few month, months, the agreement is better kept after talks with the Turkey side. I believe that the key to the resolving the refugee crisis lies in Turkey by controlling the flow. We need a restatement that works as well as the distribution of refugees within Europe. When boats arrive, the refugees will be transferred to hotspots. Immigrants will be turned by the Coast Guard back to Turkey the following day, and the rest will be distributed proportionately. The key is prevention, which can be interpreted as follows. The flow of these people needs to stop in Turkey, where they can be recorded and then proceed to European countries that have a green show and have available slots. With great respect to a country which hosts more than two and a half million refugees, I say that this is where the problem can be prevented. We must all contribute in Turkey's effort to hold and manage the refugee influx until the end of hostilities in the Middle East and particular Syria. Finally, of NATO's involvement in marine patrols, it's a very delicate situation. We would like to believe that it will reduce the refugee flow, the patrolling and rescue, as it has been declared. Ladies and gentlemen, this, this summit which focuses on refugee health care is a very good opportunity to effectively ev evaluate the involved countries' experience in this unprecedented humanitarian crisis. We believe that Europe, which was built on the principles and values of democracy, freedom, solidarity, co cooperation, and humanity, must ensure and necessary political consultation and joint action to face the daily tragedy which unfolds in the Aegean Sea and the, the, Mediterranean, the Mediterranean Sea and the land routes to the Central Europe. 
the unabated migration flow, demands for meeting these people's health needs, and obvious parameter to the Panhellenic Medical Association. My country, however, has been left alone in the midst of austerity to take care of and treat hundreds of refugees and immigrants who are, who are daily washed up on the coast of the southeastern end of the Aegean Sea. Hippocrates, the founder of medicine, describes it best in his Maxim, Ukeni iatrikin idene, ostis mi iden oti estin anthropos, which in English translates to he, to he who does not comprehend man is impossible to know medicine. However, the problem of migration has not bothered, is not only a problem for Greece, but for the whole of Europe and by extension the world. Obviously, there is no question of a health time bomb and transmitting infectious diseases, but the need for preliminary and emergency health care for people with general population disease, early registration and classification of those who need specific health care and emergency ambulatory care and transfer to public structures of the NHS in our country, that is hospitals, primary, primary care units, health centers. Today, despite the non-manageable increase in refugee flows in Greece, but thanks to the sensitivity and emotional support by residents, health care professionals, Irangios, where refugees arrive, have effectively provided health coverage for refugees and immigrants. However, this has burdened the state budget and the national health system and has begun to extort the sense as potential of exceptional social solidarity initiative. It is, therefore, the necessary to direct financing from, therefore, European funds throw an overall strategic plan of adequate health care, which will include, first, reinforcing with staff as well as medicine, vaccine and consumables in all public structures on the island of the Aegean Sea, which are entrance gates. Second, 24 hour daily coverage with medical and nursing staff, isatical hospitals, and trusting center. Third, standardization of direct care procedures, application of registration protocols, introduction of health care cards, and management of the overall refugee migrant, health problem, certification, and coordination of all involved organizations and volunteers provision of information materials, as well as health professionals training in the intercultural civilization and respect for human rights and patients' rights. Greece has already some funding requests to specific European funds, ISF, AMIF, etc. Recently, the ISF responded by approving a 3.20 5 million euros budget for strengthening the public health structures in human resources. Uh, destination countries for refugees, but always respecting human rights and cultural difference, ladies and gentlemen. In the health sector, as in all areas, relevant to the refugee issue on fundamental human values are being tested. This wind of chain will either lead us in the direction of humanism, solidarity, and cooperation on the interesting logic of closed border and xenophobia will prevail. For Greece, it's most obvious which path to take. Let us, therefore, brace ourselves to our duty as doctors so bear ourselves and the lead Europeans and the world's political leaders to identify their decisions and action on the refugee issue with humanist values. And above all, as 
Hippocrates has said to aim or do no harm. Thank you very much. Epharisto. Thank you very much uh, for the striking and informative uh, speech, the, the biggest humanistic crisis from the point of view of Greece, uh, which is the, uh, one of the recipient and passage countries on their route. Now we have uh, the representative of Belgium Medical Association, Professor Andre Herschwitz, uh, will share their experiences uh, in Belgium. I, I uh, have a presentation. Yes, Can please. I have it? Yeah. Yes, please. Thank you. Dear colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the organizers for the kind invitation to present the situation in Belgium. In Belgium, we have a, 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 a office that grants protection and issues documents to men, women, and children fleeing from persecution, war, and violence. The story starts, uh, where is the pointer? The story starts uh, when you are uh, candidate refugees, you have to register, and then from that time you receive reception and assistance, uh, including medical assistance. Then there is an interview and then a decision which is either positive or negative to obtain the refugee status. north of, uh, of Brussels, that's the red building, which is on the boulevard, uh, where is the building where the CPME is having its meetings. What is the number of refugees in Belgium? These are official data, for instance, for September. There have been about 5,500 requests for asylum during this month, and about uh, 1,300 decisions that have been taken. Where are the people coming from? Well, from Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan, Somalia, and from other countries. What? That's a pointer, okay. Uh, is that a lot of uh, requests of refugees? Uh, you see here a map of Europe with the bars, which gives you an idea of the number of requests per country. And of course, you see that Germany is the highest. Uh, but, uh, and here you have Belgium, which is about uh, 10 times less, but the country, the surface of the country is about 10 times lower than that of Germany, and the number of habitants is also 10 times lower. So that means that the density is about the same in Germany and in Belgium. This gives you an idea of the request of uh, asylum per, per year, and you see that at the end, you, at the end, uh, the last um, months, we have an increase, which is important, up to 11,000 per month. Uh, this means that there are a lot of people close to this building asking to be registered, and this gives you an idea of what happened in September, October of, this, of last year in Belgium. People waiting to be registered and to be uh, introduced. And of course, the problem is during the night where to sleep. People were sleeping in, in the street or in a park in tents close to the uh, office in the Park Maximilian. Here you have a few other figures, people living on the avenue, close to these World Trade Centers. 
at the end, nevertheless, there have been some measures that have been taken to accept these people in best condition. And for instance, in these buildings, which are the World Trade Center, where they can now wait. Why does it work? Where they can wait inside and receive uh, medical help. This is mainly done by an NGO which is called Médecins du Monde, Doctors of the World, and this gives you an idea of the activity uh, that has been raised uh, during uh, this period. For instance, in 2014, the number of consultations by these voluntary works, workers, which are unpaid, uh, and there are about 300, there were about 380 for, for Belgium. In September and, and in Brussels, essentially, there have been about 150 consultations a day by these volunteer workers, which were about 250 in Brussels. These were not only physicians, but also nurses, psychologists, receptionists, interpreters, social assistants, and also specialized uh, person from uh, the National Organization for the Infancy to take care of the small children and the pregnant woman. At registration, uh, there is tuberculosis screening, later on HIV uh, screening, hepatitis B and C, and also uh, um, vaccines are provided, trivalent vaccine, the two main trivalent vaccines, and also polio. Uh, here we have some data from a study that has been made by the University of Brussels. You see that the request is also about 5,000 uh, per month. That only uh, in September, for instance, and that there is an increase with the different months. Uh, the waiting time for appointment, as you can see here, uh, is about four days. And uh, the, these people are located in different parts of the city, in the Parc Maximilien that we saw, but then progressively in better places like the World Trade Center. From these studies, it also appears that there are about 4,000 consultations per month. This is the number of consultations per day, around 150. And uh, the time of arrival at the time of uh, the consultation. This gives you a little bit more information about the type of uh, patients which are consulting the doctors. The age, the majority of the age is, uh, no. Majority of the age is adult, but there are also small children, uh, about 10%. Uh, you see, again, 10% children, 9% women and men. What kind of disease? Well, in view of the period of the year, many respiratory diseases, but also, you see, injuries due to the travel with once an accident trauma may be due to the police in certain countries. And also you see that there are many other type of illness. Uh, as I told you, uh, a lot of work is done by Médecins du Monde, this NGO, but also by doctors that are living in this place. Many people are also going directly to the emergency department. There are also other uh, consultation possible and available. As you know also in Belgium we had some terrorist uh, situation and the con the, in view of the security that was needed to, to control all that, the offices have been closed during a few days which, is not, uh, which was not improving the situation. Another problem is that Belgium is close to France and for instance, to Calais, where we know that there are many people waiting to try to go to the UK. And you see that there is the famous jungle 
of, of Calais, which is there, which gives you an idea of what it was. And many of these people are leaving for France, coming to Belgium, trying to find another place to go to, United Place, the United Kingdom, and this, of course, also increases the problem in our country. To finish, I would like to thank the different uh, uh, organizations that gave me all these information, and also this Belgian Expert Center for uh, Health Care. And then finally, to, th to finish, I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Professor uh, Andre Herschultz, for this uh, informative uh, speech. And now uh, we will have uh, the president of Israel Medical Association, Dr. Leonid Edelman, to share their experiences. Thank you, Professor Axel. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Bayezid Ilan uh, from uh, uh, Turkish Medical Association and Dr. Seljuk Erez from uh, Istanbul Chamber of Medicine for organizing this very important uh, meeting and uh, also definitely World Medical Association, uh, Professor Michael Marmot and uh, Dr. Otmar Kloiber. I believe that uh, this meeting is uh, very important and in a proper place and tackling with uh, this uh, crisis of uh, migration nowadays is one of the biggest uh, challenges for medical uh, community. Every day people around the world are forced to leave their homes as a result of war, political persecution, natural disasters, epidemics, poverty and hunger, and seek safe shelter for themselves and their families. After World War II, nearly one million refugees, mostly from Europe, Iraq and Morocco, have been absorbed in Israel. Beginning in the mid-90s, many people from Africa started to illegally enter Israel through the Israel-Egypt border. Most of these illegal immigrants entered Israel before the border was fenced. Till 2013, approximately 70,000 African immigrants, mostly from Eritrea and the Republic of Sudan, has entered uh, Israel. Israel is, um, uh, in those days, a little bit less than 8 million people, so the percentage was uh, uh, not, not low, but uh, actually it wasn't one wave as it is now for one year, it was for several years. According to the Office of uh, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees in Israel last year, there were about uh, 45,000 persons of concern. This includes about uh, 40,000 refugees or like refugees, which includes persons in a refugee-like situation, for whom refugee status has not been ascertained. In regards to the social rights, including the right to health of migrants, the State of Israel doesn't distinguish in principle between the persons seeking asylum and those who do not officially do so. Uh, the 1994 Israeli National Health Insurance Act, which uh, regulates the majority of health services in Israel and provides universal coverage for all Israeli residents, does not apply to asylum seekers and undocumented persons in general, since they are not considered residents of Israel. Therefore, they cannot join a health fund and insure themselves, and they are not allowed to get services in health funds clinic that provides these services for Israeli residents. The United Nations Committee on Implementation of the 1951 Convention on the Status of Refugees recently recommended that Israel expand the scope of the Health Insurance Act to include persons who do not hold a permanent residence permit in order to ensure universal access to basic health care. In addition, the Israeli National Health Insurance Act authorizes the Minister of Health to make arrangements regarding the provision of health services to a non-insured person under the law. 
including the possibility of registration with the health funds. Unfortunately, no health minister in Israel has exercised this power, leaving asylum seekers outside the health insurance law. Holders of temporary resident permit may be illegal immigrants and asylum seekers, and this does not allow them to work in Israel. However, today the government does not enforce this prohibition of uh, employment to the migrant community. In contrast to foreign workers whose employers are obliged to purchase uh, private health insurance, there is a lack of clarity as to the eligibility of migrant workers to private health insurance from their employers. It is difficult to estimate the rate of insured persons within this population, but the number appears to be small. The reason for this may be that uh, many non-residents are not employed. In contrast, in Israel there is an arrangement for undocumented minors, including asylum seekers, who are children or children of asylum seekers. According to a voluntary arrangement of one of the health funds since 2001, parents without status can voluntarily purchase health insurance for their children. The arrangement entitles children to services included in the health basket under the National Health Insurance Law at the cost of about $50 per month. In addition, the Ministry of Health assists in financing these services. According to estimates, about 8,000 undocumented minors reside in Israel. In 2013, about 3,000 were insured under the minors arrangement, most of them up to age of six. The significance of these figures means that 60% of the population of undocumented minors do not have health insurance. It seems that due to voluntary, voluntary nature of arrangement, not all children are registered to it. This could be down to a number of factors, such as its uh, uh, required payment, insurance restrictions that apply to the medical conditions, communication difficulties, fear of contact with the authorities, and so on. In 2012, there were about uh, 2,000 hospitalizations of minors, and uh, 150 surgeries were performed. In the absence of national health insurance, undocumented persons are legally entitled to receive emergency medical care. They are also eligible for testing and services of the district health offices, maternity care, and treatment at well baby clinics, which are operated by state and local governments. The Israeli Medical Association has established, together with the Minister of Health, a free clinic that provides primary health care to foreign workers and refugees. The clinic, that, uh, which was opened in September 2008, operate in a central bus station in Tel Aviv, an area where many refugees reside. The Israeli Medical Association was responsible for the recruitment of voluntary uh, physicians, the organization of clinic procedures, and assisted in raising funds for equipment. In addition, the Israeli Medical Association initiated a major drive to secure medication free of charge and received uh, donations from major pharmaceutical companies. Improvement of these services provided at the clinic were made possible thanks to voluntary doctors who dedicated themselves to these important projects. We had a lot of doctors that wanted to volunteer in this clinic. The clinic is completely dependent on the activities of these doctors who give it uh, uh, their time, their energy, and their expertise. The clinic is also supported by the voluntary work of teams of nurses, pharmacists, ph paramedics, and <coughs> interpreters. As for 2013, there were about 9,000 registered cases in the clinic. Current refers to the clinic are growing. An additional medical clinic called uh, Tel Aviv Levinsky provide the services for detecting and tra treating sexually transmitted diseases and AIDS free to anyone regardless of civil status. An open clinic run by Physicians for Human Rights has been operating since 1998 and provides primary and secondary health care to persons with homeless status. In 2012, 6,800 uh, 6, people visited the clinic, including uh, 
2,500 new patients. The Israeli Ministry of Health has recently opened another clinic that serves foreign workers and undocumented persons in another city, Haifa. Many hospitals around the country receive migrant uh, patients without health insurance and treat them without receiving payment. Physicians perform treatment, including surgeries, on a voluntary basis. Many physicians, including myself, are doing this on a regular basis. A significant proportion of patients coming to one of the largest hospitals in Israel, which is in the center of Tel Aviv, Saraski Medical Center, uh, and uh, in 2012, the medical center received uh, uh, more than 15,000 uh, foreigners, almost half of them, uh, with no health insurance. Compared to figures with uh, 2008, this was a 68% increase. And uh, in addition, the same year recorded uh, more than 400 hospitalization, 10,000 uh, emergency room visits, 900 uh, surgeries, and uh, 900 births of uh, foreigners without insurance. The medical center is obliged to take on the lost uh, costs that uh, take on the lost costs that are not collected from this population, estimated to be ten, tens of millions of shekels. Moral and legal commitment of countries to take in refugees and asylum seekers and help them in answering in international law. This population needs not only legal protection, but also the active assistance of all branches of government, social systems, and civil society, including, of course, the health system and the medical community. This is to ensure that the refugees' basic rights, first and foremost, uh, access to health services are met. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Leonid Edelman, uh, for this uh, informative and important uh, speech. Now we will have half an hour coffee break, but following the coffee break, we will have the discussion of this session. So we will return half an hour later. We wait for you on time. Şimdi kısa bir film göstermek istiyoruz mültecilerle ilgili olaraktan, mülteci konusuyla ilgili olaraktan ve arkasından da panelimize geçeceğiz. Between two and four days. No, 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 no. I'm not going and then the Oscar. Uh, he's from home. <laughs> Hello. He's from Hello. He's from Persuade the neighbors. He's trying to persuade the neighbors. Stratis, where is he? Mm, <laughs> 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 
uh, taken from the Coast Guard boat that they were saving. They, uh, it was... Uh, Now I would like to invite our speakers for the discussion session, please. Sweden, Greece, Belgium and Israeli medical associations. Now we have 40 minutes to discuss. Uh, now floor is yours. If there is any comments, any questions uh, to the speakers and any uh, issues to be raised and uh, discussed here. Please, Otmar, and we will need mic for the translation. Mikrofonu getirebilir misiniz ön sıraya lütfen? Thank you very much, um, Otmar Klaber, World Medical Association. Um, a question to all of the, the four speakers. Is one of your or all of your medical associations um, recommending to the government to include all migrants coming to your country into the regular system, the system of social insurance or the national health care system in your country um, with full benefits. So to make no difference to um, other people insured under your system. Or is that something you are not considering? Thank you for the question. And uh, if you wish, we can start with the uh, uh, with Sweden. I can start. Uh, thank you, Otmar. It's a very important uh, issue for us. Uh, we do recommend uh, our authorities to include all refugees fully, which means uh, full access to health care during the, the process uh, and in also dental care for, for minors. Uh, which means uh, under the age of 18. Then we also uh, stress that they get access to schools because that's a key issue to, to make the children get into the school systems. And, and uh, yes, this, this is probably the most important uh, uh, way, well, or, or the, the most important thing we can do is to, to make their way into the society easier because uh, they also have a challenge waiting in the system and it's it's uh, the first weeks are okay the first months maybe but then it's very stressful for them to wait the insecurity they don't know if 
whether they will stay in Sweden or they will be uh, refuse to stay, and and they do have needs, uh, and and the healthcare system can provide that and should as well. So so yes, but it is a challenge. It doesn't mean that our uh, government. Uh, listen to that. And we do have a debate in Sweden going on. Two years ago, it sounded quite different than from today. Uh, and, and our government has uh, a new law coming out um, to, so that the, the asylum seekers won't get, uh, for example, from Syria won't get permanent residency, uh, but a three-year residency first. Oh, well, they might get a permanent later. But this sends uh, the signal to the refugees that the, the, the if they can stay or not, will be unsecure, which lead to psychological stress and the, the need of support from the healthcare system. Thank you. Yes, in Belgium also, we have a system, a procedure, I would say, in our, uh, to prepare this, uh, this meeting I has to receive the procedure to, to describe all the, the type of situation that may exist and how to proceed. And so I, I would say that there is indeed a regular pathway for refugees to, to take care, to, to benefit of uh, the healthcare system in Belgium. And when a patient is ill and goes to the emergency of any hospital, he is going to be, uh, there will be a doctor to take care of him. Uh, provide, of course, a public hospital. So the system exists and there is, uh, I would say, no great need to insist on the government to change the, the rules. That's it. Legal advisor of Panhellenic. Legal advisor of uh, Greek Medical Association will answer. Uh, we have uh, hot spots in uh, some uh, in uh, some uh, islands. Uh, we make uh, the screening about uh, who are asylum uh, uh, seekers or refugees and uh, who are uh, the irregular or non-documented uh, uh, migrants and uh, we, we make a discrimination there because uh, uh, the legal status of, uh, of uh, refugees is uh, different, uh, different as uh, we know. Uh, we make medical examinations according to international health regulations. Uh, for example, uh, TB uh, X-ray control and uh, uh, for meaning meningitis uh, for uh, fever, um, not for sexually transmitted diseases. Uh, but uh, physical or, or clinical examination. And uh, if uh, the doctors uh, uh, judge that uh, they need uh, more uh, health care or uh, health care in, uh, in a hospital, they can be treated uh, for free in uh, hospitals, in uh, national health hospitals. Um, if, uh, as we know, uh, Greece is a, a transit uh, land, uh, nobody wants uh, to stay uh, there, and uh, th that is the problem. And uh, we make vaccinations, for example, for, for the kids. We have problems uh, with, uh, with uh, kids uh, that are without parents, and uh, we try to make a system, orphans, uh, we try to make a system in order to find by DNA and so on, uh, their uh, parents uh, who, who may be in uh, different countries. And uh, um, we, um, 
the, the only problem is that uh, and uh, we could uh, take care for education of uh, these people that uh, will stay in uh, uh, will stay in uh, our country and uh, we know that uh, a proportion that uh, will stay but uh, we would like to say that uh, uh, we have a problem between the uh, we have no uh, possibility and we do not believe to this measure of uh, of making walls because we have the sea and uh, we are and uh, we are uh, we have the legal uh, possibility and the legal uh, obligation to save uh, them uh, because they are they sinking their boats and they are drowned and uh, we would like to save uh, their lives. We, we are obliged to do that and we are obliged to uh, obliged to uh, help them to, to, to care them to care them and to provide them what is uh, necessary in order to live. Thank you very much. Back to your question that is uh, definitely very important for every medical association. What is the position? The position of Israel Medical Association is very clear. We uh, demand uh, the universal coverage for all those who reside in Israel. It doesn't matter whether they are resident, non-resident, uh, illegal immigrants, because, uh, because we are taking care of, him, of them in any case. And uh, we demand from Israeli doctors to take care of every uh, person is in need. Doesn't matter what is his uh, uh, origin. But uh, as I said, uh, we are very uh, unhappy with uh, uh, the fact that uh, Ministry of Health doesn't uh, uh, take needed steps to uh, engage all these uh, uh, non-residents, uh, illegal workers, and uh, all other people in this universal coverage. And uh, also I stressed it before that in, in emergency cases, all of them get uh, needed uh, help. But uh, I believe that uh, some of them uh, are not uh, looking for the contact with authorities and are not looking for uh, medical help. Uh, they are afraid uh, to be uh, found by uh, authorities. And uh, I myself took care of some uh, uh, chronic disease very advanced because they were afraid to ask for help for, for some years. And uh, that's a real problem. And uh, as uh, uh, Michael said before, uh, I still believe that uh, every politician is uh, on the same in the same position. That if you take, if you give everything, you invite more uh, immigrants. So uh, we are taking care of all of them, and we are demanding universal coverage. And unfortunately, it's not the situation in Israel now. Thank you for the answers. Yes, please. Please uh, introduce yourselves and uh, your inst uh, organization. Yes. Uh, good morning. My name is Apostolos Vezis, and I'm the uh, head of medical operations support unit for MSF. I promise to make questions. So, um, the Italian colleagues and the Spanish colleagues. A few years ago, the Italian colleagues they came in the street saying that we are not spies to give our patients' name if they are documented or not. The last year in Spain, the doctors, they created a, a video saying that we would like to respect the Hippocrates oath. And we are not going to, uh, we are going to provide treatment to anybody coming, being documenting or not. I would like to ask the medical association of the countries that are on the, around the table, if ever was any, first of all, any uh, political position, may, may, meaning a press release or a statement of the medical association mentioning what their, their position towards the, 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 the refugees' health and migrants' health, or if there was any demonstration from their sides as members of the medical association talking about the, the right of the refugees and migrants to health. Thank you.
The question all, uh, to all medical associations, so we can start with Sweden again. Uh, Sweden has been working for this uh, for several years and we have um, persuaded together with the nurses organizations and, and well, all the other health professionals uh, that the government are providing health care to, to um, uh, refugees and uh, both the one in the system and the one hiding or, or um, not able to, to uh, seek asylum. So they, they should have access to health care. Uh, but at the moment, there are a political drift against, uh, well, to try to limit the access. And we work strongly against that. We had an article in the paper, the biggest paper today, uh, I just got it here published, uh, to, to work against the political, political drift to, to uh, limit the access to health care. And it, uh, we are worried, we are very worried actually, that uh, there will be political uh, statements and, uh, and other uh, limitations uh, due to, uh, to the amount of health care that the refugees could access to. We have, um, we don't, well, we haven't had demonstrations, but, but we are uh, in the media quite often to, uh, for this. And, uh, well, uh, but we can always do more. I think Sweden has, you know, we are debating about if we can provide vaccination for everyone. And on the other side, in the Mediterranean, people, people are drowning. So, you know, what we face as a challenge in Sweden, it, you can't always compare it to the challenge, for example, that, that what you are working with. So we have, we face them as challenges, but they are minor challenges many times. So we can definitely do more. I'm not quite sure that I understood the question. The question was thus, uh, is the medical association in our country obliged to intervene to allow the health care of uh, immigrants? Is that the question? No, 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 of course. Do they need to do it? Have you ever taken to the stance about it as a medical association? You don't need to provide medical care. Did you ever, as a medical association, took a stance and saying, we believe that, one, two, three, or we don't believe? Okay. I mean, that's what I'm saying. No, that, that I remember, but that means that the care is, is given to, to, to the patient, and so we do not have to intervene. Yes, uh, we asked uh, Greek uh, medical associations. Uh, we believe and uh, we declare uh, to the Hipp Hippocrates oath to the human rights and the civil liberties from all uh, persons that uh, come in, uh, in, in, in our country. And uh, you know that uh, our national health system is open to anyone um, uh, th that needs uh, health care. And uh, we cooperate uh, with uh, Medicine Sans Frontières, uh, Medicine du Monde, and uh, we thank you very much for your uh, support and for your medical uh, support. And uh, uh, perhaps uh, we can, uh, now we are well organized, every time we uh, get uh, organized and uh, we have more hotspots, we have more infrastructure uh, st uh, in order to hospitalize all uh, these people. And uh, we believe that uh, human rights, civil liberties and Hippocrates oath is our belief and our uh, declaration. Thank you very much. 
Uh, as I said, our position is quite clear, and uh, according to our ethical code, uh, all the doctors should take care of all persons, uh, and it uh, doesn't matter whether they, are, they have health coverage insurance or not, and uh, whether they are migrants or permanent residents of the country. And uh, our doctors do it on a regular basis. And uh, even uh, hospital administrators uh, agree to take uh, patients without insurance, uh, those refugees, uh, and uh, provide uh, medical care. And uh, as, uh, as much as uh, I know, our medical uh, community is uh, anonymously uh, support that uh, every doctor should take care of every patient. Uh, there will be an additional comment from Swedish Medical Association, Dr. Heidi. Mm -hmm. uh, we have also make, made statements about the, uh, the evaluation of age uh, and when it comes to physicians participating in the evaluation of age because for minors under the age of 18, there will be another process, a, a faster uh, process for um, gaining the residency. And uh, from the government, there are, um, they want us to take part in the evaluation of age. And we have stated that as long as there are no methods where it's good enough or scientific proven to be accurate enough uh, to, to say about the age, we won't take part of it. And what we want also is you know, to have a broad uh, evaluation about age, not only an x-ray taken, because that won't be uh, accurate enough. And, and uh, this, uh, so you have to, to have like a um, whole other process and our National Board of Health and Welfare has listened to us and they are now looking into the, well, all the scientific uh, papers and trying to find a method. And there won't be one method. It won't probably be uh, a package uh, and a process going through to estimate age instead of only taking an x-ray. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it's, uh, we have worked hard on this. Thank you. Thank you for the answers. Yes, please. There Şuradaki hanımefendi. Okay, okay, I will give another. Yes, I gave the word there and then there. Just a minute, uh, excuse me, there will be a lady. Okay, uh, the next word is yours, I promise. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm Serap Şener from WHO office in Ankara, country office in Ankara. Um, I, first of all, I want to thank you. Uh, I think we had very informative uh, information from the presenters. Uh, my question will be regarding the health professionals among the refugees. Um, like in Turkey, actually, the uh, doctors and nurses are allowed uh, with a new regulation to work in the international organizations uh, to give services, health services to the refugees. And now there is a new regulation. Uh, Minister of Health is discussing how to involve them in the health system, again, to give some uh, services only to Syrian refugees. Um, they are, uh, this will be like an interim um, measurement, actually, to overcome the language barrier. So, um, are there any initiative in the uh, in uh, the, uh, their countries similar to that? I mean, are are they working uh, with health professionals, refugee health professionals? Uh, are there any training program, adaptation training program for them uh, organized? Okay, who uh, can we start with you again? Yes. Thank you for the question. It's a quite complex uh, question, actually. So for the first part, uh, yeah, we have had a discussion if um, the refugees coming with the background as physicians or other healthcare workers, if they can sort of start participating among the refugees to start providing healthcare. And uh, that, and we would, um, it would ease 
the situation through that they, they got language knowledge system we have. We have a, a great problem with the lack of interpreters, for example. And you know, we thought that would be a good idea. They know the, the language, they communicate good, they, they do, but they are not licensed yet. But then, well, then you meet the, the Swedish bureaucracy. And we have a system in Sweden so that to be able to work as a health professional, you need a license. To get a license, we get a system for that. And most of them are stuck in, in the system now, trying to get a license, trying to get through the authorities, and it do take time. And we have dis been discussing this for about two years. And what have happened is that uh, the government are working on a fast track for health professionals to go on the labor market which is not really simple because they are working so hard on the fast track that the fast track is, is, uh, is at the risk not being good enough, you know, not being uh, able to, to, uh, to um, uh, offer uh, um, language courses in the amount that we need, not being able to evaluate the education uh, good enough. So we are at the moment struggling to form the fast track. Uh, it's, it's a big, big issue. So they, yes, they, we are working on this, how to, to get them from being refugees on the, out of the labor market, and there are several uh, authorities working on it, but it's not working at the moment, um, you can tell. It do take a lot of time. And, and uh, we also have a struggle with the quality, because it, we, we need that the quality uh, on the fast track is being good enough. Uh, I've got a colleague here who uh, so might say something about that later, the next one. <laughs> I, I would simply say that we have about the same system and situation in Belgium. That's, we are working on it, yeah. Long, uh, we have a long experience, uh, as uh, you know, with uh, undocumented, uh, undocumented uh, migrants uh, from uh, 1990, and um, we uh, have uh, special regulations for them, and uh, especially for uh, especially for people till 18. Uh, years old and for people that are in uh, emergency in an emergency status of uh, health um, so we c could uh, cover for example uh, HIV age uh, and but every two or three years we have special regulations about uh, these uh, people that uh, could not be covered and uh, they could uh, have uh, antiretroviral uh, therapy uh, for free. Uh, so, uh, for refugees, all national health system is uh, free if they need uh, to, ho to have uh, hospital uh, care. And uh, even for, uh, for fair, for, uh, for refugees, for first, uh, uh, from, from primary uh, health care, uh, they have all of them state primary health care, and uh, now we are supported by uh, by non uh, NGOs, and uh, we take the certificates of uh, NGOs that uh, they are really doctors and uh, so on. But uh, every, in a voluntary basis, every doctor can, uh, uh, can help and uh, they can be registered in the, in the local uh, medical associations. But uh, we do not, uh, it's uh, the right to health, it's uh, uh, it's a, a constitutional uh, right about uh, five, it's uh, Article 5, uh, Paragraph 5 of our uh, constitutions and uh, 21 Paragraph 3 of our constitutions. So we are obliged uh, to, uh, to give health care for every person, for every individual that is in our uh, country. 
Uh, so we do not uh, need uh, some special, more special uh, regulation for that. Thank you very much. I believe that I expect this on the situation in Israel about this. So any other uh, aspects? Uh, maybe I haven't heard it. Uh, what is the uh, what is the question? question? physicians, nurses, midwives from the refugees, and what is the approach of your... Ah, I see. Uh, I'm sorry, because there is kind of echo I haven't heard. Uh, we didn't have any uh, migrants uh, for, uh, that I mentioned before of uh, any kind of pro medical professions. Mostly they are men, they are young men, and uh, we haven't had uh, this uh, situation uh, that uh, needed us to address. But uh, we had other fo foreign workers that uh, came to Israel looking for uh, some uh, work. And uh, we have very uh, clear uh, rules about uh, the uh, permission to work in Israel, uh, either as a physician or midwife or nurse. Thank you. Uh, yes, please. Okay. Uh, uh, Henrik Sjöval from Gothenburg, Sweden. I've been working with clinical update courses for immigrant doctors for more than 10 years. And it's a very interesting group because they are much more heterogeneous than Swedish medical students. Uh, the best ones are clearly better than the best Swedish students and there are some, some of those who shouldn't be let into our system. Uh, that is, these, it's, I think it's a serious mistake to, in some kind of uh, uh, beneficial attitude to, to let them into our system and hope that this is going to be all right, because it isn't. A medical school is about the same all over the world. The, the essence is the same. But the ways of handling things, teamwork, attitudes, uh, uh, author, uh, authoritarian behavior, etc., etc., is, is very different between countries. My, my question is really, do you have a quality control system of these health professionals coming into your country? Do you assure that they are really up to standards before you allow them to start working? I cannot answer it to your question. Uh, um, I'm not do quite have, sure. Do you have any evaluation system, quality. Uh, quality, uh, quality assessment of the incoming uh, professionals? I, I, could, um, yeah. I, I could start if you uh, okay. would like to. Mm. Yeah. Okay. It's, uh, uh, thank you for my Swedish uh, colleague there. Well, that's a challenge in Sweden. We, we Our um, evaluation system is uh, Apart from the authorities working uh, slowly, uh, we, we, there are different ways, of, two different ways of, of getting onto the labor market and, and being licensed as well in, in Sweden. And uh, b uh, I can see that both of them have difficulties with uh, providing the, the, uh, what they should uh, to, to uh, evaluate. It, it, it takes a lot of time, but on the other side, if it doesn't take time and if it isn't good enough, it's, the risk is that, that the quality won't be uh, good enough. And that's where we are in Sweden at the moment. Our evaluation system is, is not uh, good enough, I think. We have a system in Belgium, of course, uh, to accept uh, doctors coming from other countries, but this is a regular system, and this, this system is also applied to the doctors uh, being yes. migrants. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we held the regulations of the uh, European uh, Union and uh, the free movement, uh, if they are doctors that uh, have a legal license in other European countries, in member states of European countries, uh, we, we accept them. 
if they are from other countries and uh, it's uh, and there are only for refugees uh, we have only to uh, to uh, request a certification by their country they are, that they are ca capable in their country to uh, exercise uh, medicine. Uh, so uh, in, when we have a flow of uh, refugee flow of uh, thousands of uh, every, every day, it's uh, very difficult to talk about uh, medical assurance. Uh, first is to leave, uh, first is to, uh, to give uh, first aid, and uh, second, uh, to, make quality, uh, to, to make quality assurance uh, for uh, doctors, but uh, for, uh, uh, for doctors who are, who are voluntarily uh, give their uh, care or uh, assistance, uh, we only certificate them, and uh, they are especially from NGOs, uh, certificated uh, uh, international NGOs, for example, uh, Médecins Sans Frontières, uh, Médecins uh, du Monde. Uh, so we, uh, we request a certification that uh, they are doctors or uh, uh, accredited uh, nurses. Uh, from their their countries of origin, that they have the the, the right, uh, they are entitled to ask a medical uh, profession. Thank you very much. As I mentioned before, uh, we have this quality control, and uh, those who uh, actually came to Israel as uh, doctors should pass exams. And uh, first of all, to get the license for uh, be a physician, and then if he wants uh, to be recognized as a specialist in certain uh, area, uh, he should uh, ask uh, scientific council, which uh, function uh, is a part of Israeli Medical Association, the scientific council. And uh, if he wants to start residency after he found a place for residency, let's say in surgery, in gynecology, so we open uh, his file and uh, there is a syllabus, syllabus that he should go uh, to be recognized as a specialist in this area, including uh, exams. I would like to thank you all for your participation and our valuable speakers for their uh, sharing of their experiences. Uh, I'm very sorry that we came to the end of our session. Uh, we don't have any break. We will have another keynote speech uh, following after our uh, session. Thank you very much again.